Welcome back. This is such a special day for me to introduce to you my dear friend, Wendy Darling. Wendy is best known to her friends and clients alike as the fairy godmother of all good things. <laughs> and I got to tell you, from firsthand experience, having a fairy godmother at every age is not only necessary, it is welcome. Wendy, I'm just going to bring you on and let this conversation go where it goes. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. Let's talk a little bit about you, and then we're going to talk about your books. Okay, that sounds wonderful. It's delightful to be with you today, as always. So tell us a little bit about your past. You've been on the show before. We've talked about different aspects of your work, but you have such a varied past and all that you've done more recently. I want to bring our audience up to speed and up to date, and you're just you know, thrilled to share what's going on. And, and so am I. Well, thanks. Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be doing this today because all of you will just, I'm just going to be honest, Lauren and I are really good friends. <laughs> Secondly, this happens to be my birthday. I have now completed, ugh, it's going to 72 years on this planet. So I turned 72 today. And it's just incredible and amazing to be right where I am in this moment. So to give you a little background, I really started out, I started out as a sixth grade teacher, went back, got a couple of graduate degrees. I um, had a wonderful opportunity as Dean of Students for a program called Semester at Sea, got involved in training and development, consulting. I was doing corporate consulting, predominantly in executive and team development. That was my lane. And in 1990, my world changed quite a bit. I was traveling from Texas, where I was living, to LA. I had a lot of people waiting for me. And I was sick as a dog. It never occurred to me, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go on this trip. And so I had just gotten sick again. So I went outside the airport to get some fresh air. These were, this was in 1990. And um, I passed out. I fell over a ledge and I fell 25 feet. And the good news is I happened to land on my right leg. And the bad news is I happened to land on my right leg. My right leg was completely shattered. It took multiple surgeries over a course of about 10-ish months before I knew if I would walk again, which I do. Um, I had some back fractures. And um, I also was later diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury, which took a little while to adjust to. And it wasn't identified, by the way, at first, because this was 1990. Those kinds of things weren't in the forefront. And Around week four, being in the hospital, my former husband came suitcases packed saying he no longer wished to be married any longer. And even though I take full responsibility for my portion that contributed to that choice and decision, we might agree the timing wasn't exactly optimal, not that it ever would be. And the real blow came when, um, when we went to court. He was an attorney. He got awarded full custody of our son who was only four at the time. And that's really when I snapped. And again, to try to get to the bottom line of this, it was my mom who suggested I learn how to meditate. And at that time, quieting my mind was a complete oxymoron, but you know, desperate times, right? So that's when I began to open up to receive my healing gifts. And what has now become my transformational system, the Miraculous Living Method. You need to know this was not my world. It was a bit unsettling at first. I mean, one time when I was at this small group of people with a small group of people that I was meditating with, I walked by one of the guys in our little group and out of my mouth, I say, the block around your heart. And I'm thinking to myself, where did that come from? And what was a gift at that time is somewhere behind me, I was walking down a hallway. 
the facilitator's son, who was just a teenager at that time, but he was really very intuitive and gifted. I hear him say to the same person, you have a block around your heart. And it was really a gift, but I truly did not understand what was happening to me. But little by little, my curiosity kept me going. And today, even though I wish it would have happened a lot easier, I'm so grateful because I have been able to help hundreds, probably thousands of thousands of people get the results they want. And by the way, this fairy godmother thing, that did not come from me. It kept popping up. People kept saying it to me. I mean, I remember even being at a retreat, walking down the steps with another person in the retreat. She said, oh, God just told me that you're my fairy godmother. And I went, whoa, well, that one hasn't ever happened before. And so I went, I surrender. And the reality is, at the essence of everything I do is I believe so strongly that any desire that you have, any wish that you have is actually your truth. And my job is to help release that which is not of you and help you realign, work with your mind to strengthen it so that you really can close that gap from where you are to where you want to be. So I help people make more money, grow their business. I help singles attract love, couples replenish their relationship, people release excess weight. I've helped women who have been abused, kids with learning disabilities. So those are some of the wonderful gifts I get to be a part of. Wow. And what a far cry from a <laughs> corporate existence in learning and development. So how was it really so immediate that you were willing to accept these gifts? Because I know a number of people who have come through a similar circumstance where we're very, very uh, left brain and very task oriented. And then all of a sudden, this other swoosh of awareness comes in. And it does take a while to legitimately connect not just your brain and your reality, but to kind of cross that different kind of ledge and be willing to hear what's there. Was it, was it that way for you? Yeah, um, it kind of came in waves. I, first of all, because of my accident, prior to my accident, I was just starting to open up a little bit more to my spirituality. So there was a part of me that didn't trust what was happening. And so I had a little time with that. But I was also so traumatized between my accident and losing custody of my son that, you know, I was willing to go with almost anything. And I loved how I felt. So the first phase of my transformational work, it came with me singing. And I'm, I don't consider myself a singer. I mean, I remember, again, this was after a couple of weeks of being at this person's house. And I remember going to Michael, the facilitator, saying, you know, it's really strange. Every time I feel my mind is almost going to relax, I get this urge to sing. And he says, well, sing. And I started laughing. I said, you don't understand. I actually have people in my life that request I not do that. And I'm sure he rolled his eyes and he said, just give it a try. And I did. I went back to my little place in his house, got into that space, and I allowed what was this kind of melodic singing to come out of me. And Lauren, for the first time in such a long time, if possibly even ever, not only did my mind begin to relax, but so did my body. And that's how I really started. It just felt so good. And what I'm blessed and so grateful for is for people that have issues with meditating, of quieting their mind and their bodies, this seems to really do the trick. So for that, that made my transition easier. And, and there were phases that I would get this urge to fly to Albuquerque 
to go to Santa Fe to, you know, so there were trips where I started to get guided to, which also would give me another piece of the puzzle. So it really kind of became fun. You know, I go on these little adventures and I knew I was to receive something new and I would. So I think that's the beauty of really surrendering and allowing yourself to experience what I consider the magic and miracles of life. As you know, just last year, I had a significant change of events, shall we say. Yes, I don't did. know who I signed up to be in this lifetime, but I definitely must have said, in, in my mind, in my imagination, I have this image that as a soul, and this may be stretching it for some of your viewers, um, but I sat in the lap of God and I said, God, this time I want to experience unconditional love like never before. And God said, ho, 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 little girl, wish granted. And I had a lot of contrast in my life to begin with. It wasn't sweet. My accident, divorce, and losing custody of my son was just one nugget. I had a mom who was highly critical. She was physically, emotionally, and mentally abusive. I got contrast. And it forced me to learn. It forced me to grow. And the reason I love what I do is it doesn't have to be that way for other people. They don't have to have the tough road that I went on. And even when I was in the hospital the first time after my accident, I even said to God, nobody should have to suffer like this. Please help me dig out of this hole. And I promise I will pay it forward. And I have, and I continue to. And so as I mentioned last year, I could feel the stirrings again. I had been in a long-term relationship. I was 70 years old. And I just felt like I was being called to something new. And I've just learned, especially after my accident, it's like, pay attention. <laughs> you don't want anything like that to happen again. And I had a very honest and loving conversation with the man who I'd been in a long-term relationship with. And we chose to redefine it. And so now I knew I needed to find a new place to live. And when I started looking, I was living in San Diego at that time, loved, loved, loved living in California. I kept feeling this niggle, this nudge. And I'm like, am I being kind of nudged to consider moving out of California? And I got to be honest, it was like, well, where would that be? You know, San Diego's pretty awesome Amazing. place to live. <laughs> you know, because you too used to be a Southern California girl. And so, um, but I followed, I followed the nudges and started to explore. And there's obviously more to that story. However, a year ago in April, I flew to Sarasota, and that is now my new home. So I traveled 2,500 miles to start my life over again, which at, at that point, at 71, a lot of people, and I'm sure there were people, um, would think I'm crazy. I had a couple of moments myself where it was like, okay, is this really when? I can be declared certifiably nuts, <laughs> but I know I'm supposed to be here. And it's been a very unique experience that's been unfolding. Well, and if I remember correctly, you made that trip right over your birthday too. So it has been quite a year, quite a year of living, of living miraculously. So let's, let's jump in quickly. Cause I know that you have um, written two books that share your learning, your experience, and also your process to be able to put out to the world and let people learn from what you've learned from, to take your lessons more broadly. So the first book is Create Your Miraculous Life, right? No, the first, okay. to correct you, my first book is The Miracle That Is Your Life. Got it. So tell That's us about my, the first book. 
Yeah, my first book was really a lot about my process. Um, and um, I had one of my best friends is Robin Simons, who's a, a book publisher. And, and she has this amazing process that really helps pull out what you want to write. And I want you to know, I wrote that book in less than five weeks part-time. And, um, and what I want to mention is when we kind of got together and started organizing the book, Robin looks at me and said, well, what do you think this title should be? And we had post-it notes and everything all around the room. And I got, I kind of was drawn to this one place. And I, I want to share this because it's really how I landed in the miracle business. It wasn't like, oh yeah, let me be a miracle worker. It, it was not that way, just kind of like fairy godmother. And um, so the way this happened was I told her, as I'm going to tell you this story. So my son had just been born and I happened to have been raised Jewish. And in Judaism, you give your child a Hebrew name. And many times it's after somebody who's already deceased. And my father had recently passed away. And I definitely wanted to honor my father. My father's Hebrew name was Nissen. And Nissen translates to miracle. So then my former husband's grandfather also had recently passed away. His name was Charles. And the rabbi had to let me know because I didn't know this. So that would be Chaim, which translates to life. My son's Hebrew name is Nissen Chaim, which translates to the miracle of life. And that's really how this all got started. So what I love about this is, first of all, it honors my father. It honors my son. And by the way, that's all worked out. Um, and even though I can't say I'm 100% comfortable saying, you know, I, with this miraculous, I really believe in it. And I want people's wishes and dreams to come true. And I truly want people to be living a miraculous life. So my second book is called Create Your Miraculous Life. It's never too late because that theme was really showing up. I wrote that book during COVID. And so many people's lives were kind of tossed up and down and in and out. We didn't know what we were dealing with for quite a while. We still don't know what we're dealing with. You know, our world is in a very vulnerable place. And I want to be the voice and the inspiration that no matter what you might desire, it is never too late. You know, I had to have hip replacement surgery this on Valentine's Day this year. <laughs> it was body love day, you know? And so, and being my age, being healthy is really important. And as I mentioned, there are things that I do for other people that quite honestly, I am a student of my own methodology right now, which I'm totally okay with. I'm doing work with my body. I'm growing my business again, and I'm welcoming love. And I just started to put that welcome mat out. I don't know, obviously, when it's going to happen, but I know all of this will. And so the second book is really about you stepping in and creating that life. And so where can our viewers find your books? On Amazon. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And where can they find out more about you? Because I want to make sure that they can find you when they're ready to look. Yeah, of course. WendyDarling.com. And there's information, there are ways if you want to have a heart to heart with me, you know, just to talk about some things, that's totally okay. Can I share my gift? Uh, yes, absolutely. You may. So because it's my birthday. And I tend to be a little bit generous, but I'm doing something I've never done before. I am literally gifting my process, the miraculous living method. So what you, all you have to do 
is go to wendydarling.com forward slash jumpstart. And you will receive a little ebook with all the instructions. You will um, receive an audio of my sound healing. And you will also receive a few of my transformational cards. This is an energetic approach that helps you release that which is not of you and help you realign to your truth and close that gap from where you are to where you want to be. Thank you so much, Wendy. We are going to wrap up with you right now, but I want our viewers to know that we're gonna come back in our next segment and talk more about the process and go through some of your methodology with our viewers. So stay with us and we'll be right back.